Is there anyone that I need to kind of go through NGSS at all about? Because at the public hearings, we, we went through NGSS and kind of the philosophy and all of that. And then we finally got to the meat and potatoes of, so what are we doing? So I thought what I might do, um, and I do have some limited time. I do have to catch a plane back home to uh, see my new grandson. Um, hey. Yes, yes, my third one. Actually, the, the son that we were talking about with, uh, uh, that went to San Diego State, it's his first um, son. And, you know, I really, you know, I really have to applaud San Diego State because, you know, he did get a job and he's doing biotech and he's, you know, he, he left the San Diego area, which we were a little disappointed in, but yet excited because he's more closer to home. But what was really unique is that he left San Diego and had no job, no job at all with his wife, and he came up to the Bay Area, and within a month, within a month, he had another job. That tells you about STEM activities and STEM-related uh, jobs. It's, it, they're hopping. If you're good, and you've got a good background in STEM, there are jobs out there going to create, you know, you just have to have, be in the right place. So within a month, we thought for sure, three, four, five months, you know, he'd be living at our house. One month, he was gone. So that's a good thing. So thank you, San Diego, for educating him, and he's not coming home. Yeah. He's got a good job, all of that. So anyhow, so with, uh, with uh, NGSS, the real, the real story, and I didn't give you the full story at lunch because I didn't want to bore you too much, but you know, the legislation says that the superintendent has to produce these standards by July. It, originally, it was in March. We knew that the national project, as we started to work more and more, because California is one of the lead states, I've been uh, more times in the East Coast uh, than I've been in quite a number of years, just talking to people, thinking about it, working with the writers, doing all that. So we knew that the national project was going to take longer. We also uh, understood and we really wanted the national project to, to complete its process. We didn't want to rush it. They were trying to rush for California because we had this legislation. And a year ago, I just said, you know, Achieve and the rest of the states, this is ridiculous because we're pushing something that really is going to change uh, the, the face of education and science across the nation. Let's take some time here. So we pushed it back, and they assured me that everything would be done by January. Well, you know, the public release was in January, and then they took it in-house. And, you know, one of the biggest comments that um, Achieve got and the states got was that there was too much information. Because the philosophy of NGSS is that they want it to go deeper, not wider. So in looking at that content, if we could narrow down to what is the essential and the most important for students to understand science, biology, chemistry, earth science, physics, whatever, let's, let's think of what is the most crucial, and not for just some students. And I think um, there's an Appendix D, which is all, um, all standards, all students. It started off as maybe a five, 10 page document. It's now like 70, 80 pages. So when it's, when it's released, and I, I thought it was supposed to be released last week or this week, but um, when it's released, that's gonna be very powerful because it talks about English learners. It talks about gifted and talented students, special ed students. It's really gonna give you the research and the background of what do you do, how do you handle this? And they are talking a lot about gender equity. They're talking a lot about gifted and talented. You know, we, No Child Left Behind was really a good thing in developing equity in education. Unfortunately, the implementation of it just got to be a little bit kind of askewed with all of the assessments and all, the, all that stuff. But in reality, what it was trying to do is make sure that all kids had uh, quality education and quality teachers. In California, that wasn't such a big deal, but in other states, the quality of the teacher was that they had maybe a, a college degree no training, no anything, where us in California, we've been, I mean, I've been in the business since uh, mid-70s. You know, even then we had teacher training and we had, you know, we had a lot of work to do before we ever stepped a foot in the classroom. That wasn't the case in other states. So that whole, whole uh, high quality teacher issue really didn't do much in California, except for what it did do is it caused districts to really think about, um, are we putting in a teacher that really has the the material to be teaching, you know, do they have that information? So anyhow, so with NGSS, we knew that this was gonna take time, so we moved it back to July, which is why we're on this very fast pace. They released it in April. 
we have to have our science expert panel, which is about 25 people, and I can tell you it's um, at least a third, a little over a third K-12 teachers. We wanted to ensure that we had the teacher voice there, not just a bunch of politicians or political folks. And so they went through and they reviewed the standards, and as I said at lunch, they are in full agreement that NGSS is what California needs for our students. But now what do we do to get there? Because we don't want to just implement. See, I think what, what some folks have said is, oh, well, we'll just take our old activities and we'll reconfigure them and here we go. Okay, we've implemented. That's not what NGSS is really looking for. It's looking for that transformation. So it's going to take time. How do we get there? So we have looked at it. We think that it's appropriate. We're now discussing the middle school issue. Um, you know, in California, we adopt instructional materials, K through eight. And so we have to have some sense of what is being taught at sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. Because if you know, um, NGSS is grade span. And so what do we do? So if you have any ideas or thoughts on that, you know, I'd love to hear it. But then we need to then talk about high school. And that was what the conversation over here is about. What do we do at high school? My guess, high school folks, it's going to be uh, status quo. My guess is that you will have, you will have those districts. <laughs> You'll have those districts that are in local control. Remember, the good news of California is it's local control. The bad news of California is it's local control. So, and, and you have a governor that thinks that the flexibility in funding is appropriate for your school districts because they know. And I'm sure there are districts out there that do know how to spend their money and for the right purposes. But my guess is that the board is not going to want to take on high school. And they're going to say, and in some ways I kind of agree, you can either teach it discipline or you can teach it integrated. But if we really want STEM to occur, we need to have that kind of flexibility. So I'm not sure how high school is going to play out at the end. But I know at middle school we will probably come out with um, the SCP, the Science Expert Panel, the SCP is um, in agreement that it should be integrated. Now, should it be all earth science at sixth grade as it is today with a little bit of a life and physical, or should it be all just mixed and really provide a rich context for students to learn? So we have to think about that. So if you have any ideas on, on middle school. But so July comes, and then we're going to start um, the process of adoption. There are some folks that would like us to really adopt in July. Some want us to wait until September. There's some report, national report, that says that California should, whoa, hold on, you're going way too fast. We've been doing this for almost two years. How long would you like it to be? <laughs> so anyhow, uh, that, that report over there that starts with an F. Uh, so then, um, you know, it'll, it, by November, they have to make some decision. And my guess is that, you know, they will follow the recommendation of the superintendent, but, I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. But then becomes the process of how do we implement so that we can get to the transformation stage. So there's a couple things that are out there that you might need to know about. One of them is there's a, um, a moratorium that was put in uh, like four or five years ago that stopped the, de uh, stopped the department from developing any frameworks. You know, we were in the process of reviewing our science framework and it was gonna be something a little bit more unique than what it is today. And that got stopped. We were gearing up for a new instruction materials adoption. That got stopped. So everything kind of went to a hold. So now for us with NGSS, we had to bring on legislation to adopt new standards. Now we have to bring on legislation, which is being discussed right now, and I think it's um, Brownlee or Buchanan, I forget which one it is, that is going to start up the um, development of the framework. Now, frameworks, even if we adopt in November of 2013 and we start in, no, in uh, January of 2014, it takes at least a year to develop the framework. So you're not going to have it until probably uh, 14, 15, somewhere in there, probably more like 15. Then remember, the framework not only gives you the ideas of how to teach this stuff, but it also gives the criteria for instructional materials instruction materials takes about two years. So at best, you might see instructional materials in 2018. And then many districts take a year for piloting. That's 19. 
and then finally implement in 2020, we, we got to do something there. So we got we to gotta change. Um, now, the good news about being in a national project is that it's a national project. And so you have national groups that are all developing instruction materials. We have a, a lot of professional development that needs to happen because, you know, we have some teachers, which I'm sure are not sitting in this room, but we have a group of teachers that, you know, they put up a standard a day and they check to make sure that the student can fill out the multiple choice test at the end of the day and we move through the list, right? We're actually trying to teach kids science, not just memorize a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna have to do some professional development. We know that that's gonna take some time and it's gonna take some money. So we are working, um, there's a, a proposal that was just put in by my boss the other day that is looking for, I think it's close to $1.3 billion to do professional development for teachers, mainly in Common Core. There was some conversation about it. science might be added in there, but you know I haven't seen that piece of legislation yet. So that's an issue, but I've been working with foundations and um, CSLNet has been working with us too to try and develop some rapport with foundations that could help provide some dollars. We're hoping that the Mass Science Partnership grants that the, the federal government has put out, you know, Obama's been making lots of noise about STEM, so we're hoping we have some money there. But, you know, you have your Kiwanis Clubs. You have your local agencies that will support you. I mean, look at all, all that you had today to, that, you know, could be tapped into, really think about, and your informals. You know, your science centers, all of those kind of things can really help out too. So we're gonna, it's gonna take a village. I didn't really wanna quote Hillary Clinton, but you know, it really takes a village to raise a child. Well, in this case, it's gonna take the village to improve science education. Because it really is gonna take a lot. There is not enough money in California to professionally develop each and every teacher. And so one of the other things that we've been doing is talking about teacher leadership. And I was just in the session on teacher leadership, and I think that's so important because we've got to build capacity within our districts to really get um, the work to happen. Because there's not enough money to go classroom by classroom. But district by district or you know, school by school, there might be. So foundations are thinking about that. The biggest question though is assessment. What are we doing about assessment? You know, are we gonna start assessing in 14, 15? Um, probably not. Because even if you adopt in end of 13, it takes at least a year and a half to two years to just develop the test. And SBAC, the Smarter Balance, is only in Common Core math and the ELA. It's not in science. So California has to think about how do we even fund it, leave alone, what is it? So you're probably not going to see any testing, if you see any at all, um, except for that which is required by um, the federal legislation, probably until 15, 16, you might see some, uh, you know, the No Child Left Behind stuff in 14, 15, but, you know, that really depends. There's legislation going through right now that's trying to put a moratorium on assessment that will stop it for at least a year. Um, the, the hope is that, A, it gives you time to gear up for Common Core to really implement that. Why test on old standards when you've got new standards? But the real reason is we're looking for dollars. You know, in California, we have not been doing quite so well in the budget end of it. Now, Prop 30 really helped out a lot. And thank God we got that because we would have been in real dire straits. But now we have sequestration occurring, which doesn't sound like it's going to be a lot, but it's 5% of all your federal dollars. And another thing that you don't realize is that in federal dollars, you have a um, maintenance of effort level. So you have this level that everyone's at. And the way the legislation is written is you can't get anything less. But if you've been getting more than what your level was in 2006 or something like that, then that's the money that's in sequestration, not this money down here. You're going to get this amount. But if you've been getting more than your normal or your original amount, all of that is what's in the sequestration. And this district may not get anything in sequestration. This district has to make up for what you, this one didn't get. See what I mean? So it, even though it says 5%, the last time we went through a 5% drill, some districts lost as much as 30%, 40% of their federal dollars in particular areas because they were getting more than what they should have been getting according to a certain year. So it's, it's complicated, but there's, there's this issue. So 
Assessments are going to be an issue. Um, someone was asking, well, how can we ensure that you know we have the right kind of assessment? Well, when the uh, call comes out for anyone who'd like to be a part of the assessment team, you need to put your name in. When the framework commission starts, you got to put your name in. You know, we have good teachers down here. We have great science thinking going on. So when the, we call for framework developers, you need to put your name in. You know, and I know it's much more work. I mean, talk to Nancy. She's been on how many state level projects that we've been on just in the time that I've been at the state. It takes time, but you know, we've got to stand up as educators and say, this is what's right for our kids. And so with that, I guess we can take questions. You want to do that? So, and let me be the first one to tell you, I may have to say, I really don't know. Because there is a lot of things that we honestly just don't know because we're so new into this whole process. But at least we're able to think about um, new standards. The reason why we haven't adopted new science standards since 97, 98, whenever it was, is because no one wanted to start the science wars. They felt that you know it was just going to be too volatile. So we may not know some of the answers. So I'll do my best. Questions? You have one behind you there. Uh, uh, Gina Wetter, Hilltop High School, Chula Vista. So um, when you're saying that the high schools are going to maintain local control, and that was mostly the governor's decision, is there anything that can be done to I wouldn't say prevent that, but to, to make it more of a unified process so it's not district by district speaking, from, being oh. that we're at the Sweetwater Union High School District. <laughs> <laughs> Which district was it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, the, the main thing that I found, and this is true in, in my 13, 14 years I've been at the state, it's the local voice that makes a difference. And so if you feel that high schools should teach all integrated, or you think that high schools should have individual courses, whatever you think, send the information into the board or to myself, and then that's what gets reported. Your local voice, calling your local assemblyman or senator or whoever, that voice really makes a big difference. You don't know how many phone calls I get from some local district um, consultant who's saying, I have a constituent that said this is what's gonna happen. And then, here we go, trying to figure out what it is that was said, how is it said, what are we gonna do, you know, is that true or not? Your local voice really makes a difference. So if you really today think that high schools should be one way or another, then I would encourage you to send me an email so that I can put it into the conversation that goes to the SCP, because that's, that's their next conversation. Does that help? Okay, and I'll put my email up somewhere. It's pretty easy. Yes. Talked about middle school it being integrated, um, very likely integrated. Um, do you know if the decisions on what will be taught at each grade level are likely to be made then at the state level, or more locally or regionally? It's it'll, it'll be made at the state level, because we we have to when the superintendent takes the standards to the board, he has to decide what's going to happen at the local level or, or at the middle school level. And the SEP is the one that's going to make that decision. Yes, sir. Hi. I don't know if you saw in the a couple of weeks ago in the New York Times there was a, an article about the Common Core assessments and how um, the parents in the community were actually holding kids out of school and boycotting mm -hmm. the tests because they felt that their students were um, demoralized and yeah. unprepared. So, um, have we thought about what we're doing at the at at your level to kind of um, educate? Uh, the community and, and the, the broader spectrum of people that need to know about the Common Core testing and standards? But this, this is going to be a real concern, and it has been a concern um, since we started Common Core. You know, we have been kind of telling parents and students that if they fill in all these little bubbles correctly, they're all of a sudden brilliant kids, right? And if you didn't fill them in correctly, then uh, I guess you're not so, not so wonderful. When you get to Common Core, if that's all you've been teaching, we, we, you're going to have some angry parents because we're, we're going to ask them to think. We're going to ask them to really dis defend what they say. A lot of our bright students, you know, I'll use my own daughter-in-law. 
we'll be sitting there having a conversation and someone will say, oh, I wonder what the answer, I, I, mean, what, I wonder what this was. There she is on her Google. Well, the answer is this. Okay, I guess we're done. We have no conversation. So we have been thinking about that. I mean, it's a great conversation stopper. I agree. <laughs> I actually kind of like it because sometimes it goes on and on and on. But, you know, it, it, it stops. And, uh, well, those of you in the classroom, are you really getting those critical thinking skills that you've been looking for? Or are you getting kids wanting to know what the answer is? Yeah. And when you get to college, then what uh, we're finding in college is, is, at least what I've been told, is that the same thing holds true. They're not really interested in delving into why, it's just what. And I think that's a disservice. So yes, we are thinking about it. I don't know what the answer is gonna be, but we also know with our testing today, we have students that are having lots of difficulties right before, which is why we have, um, I was talking to one of my friends yesterday and their kid finished testing and they were having a end of testing party. They were having pizza and soda or something because they all finished testing. It's like, really? Testing's supposed to be something that helps you know what you know and not know, and, but not, that's not what this is. So I, I don't know what the answer is, but yeah, we are thinking about it. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Um, I was curious about testing. Uh, <laughs> do you think we're gonna end up going, because right now in middle school, we only test in eighth grade and we test in fifth grade for science. Do you think we're gonna move to a model that tests every year? Um, you know, assessment is kind of one of those things that I, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. And it kind of came when, when we started, when we started the Mass Science Partnership Grants, those of you that have been involved in it, and when I was the manager of that unit, all I kept saying is, really, you're going to pin your whole existence on a test that may or may not teach or test what you taught. So I think what we have to get across to the world is that, okay, no child left behind or the federal government is requiring us to test at these levels and it's really supposed to be more of a program type of test but if you really want to know what your students know or don't know that's that local formative benchmark assessment and i know a lot of districts have developed benchmark assessment but then again i find teachers waiting for and administrators and i'm sorry if i'm going to step on a toe here administrators but you know don't use the data to beat up your teachers in my wife's school, every September, they dreaded the first um, or the second faculty meeting because what did the principal do? You are not doing good at blah, blah, blah. These tests show and hey, you're not doing your job. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, that's not what this is about. Okay, maybe we're not doing well in spelling, but what are we gonna do? Well, develop your SMART goals. Well, what's a SMART goal if you, you know? So I'm sorry if I stepped on your toes, but it's just, a, it's kind of an issue, um, but, in assessment, we really need to think about, and, and uh, SBAC has really been very good about thinking about, we are not talking about assessment items, we're talking about assessment tasks. And the difference, it's kind of like, well, that's not a big deal. An assessment item is going to test a, a discrete piece of information, because, I mean, you can only bubble one thing. But if you have an assessment task, now you have to kind of maybe think about what it is that you're doing. You might have multiple steps, you might have to do. so. SBAC is really about multiple tasks and not about assessment items. I'm not saying you're not going to see multiple choice, but you might see a multiple choice with some justification. Why did you pick that? And so some of us that have been around the block a few times, not that I have, uh, been around at least once or twice, we kind of did multiple choice, justified multiple choice back in, let's see, was it the 80s, Nancy? 70s? 70, 80s? Yes. Where we've been doing this we, we thought a lot about it. And so we need to help our teachers and our administrators understand that there are local formative assessments that need to occur and that to pin our existence on this test alone is really not right. Now, will we ever see this end? I think the federal government is, they're getting hit by their um, constituents saying, well, how do we know all the money going into education works? So I think you're probably gonna see, still see that, but we really need to get to this other. Now, what you may see because you know, there's a lot of information, even though with us paring it down, you, you'll probably see more of a matrix sampling than an individual, everyone take the same test. So you might have test A, B, C, D, E, and it's this one's testing biology and that one's testing uh, genetics and that one's doing germs or something. So you might see more of that than you will see everyone take the same 
your or everyone will take the same amount of multiple choice justified, but then the task will be developed out so that you kind of get a little wider range. That it's hard to know exactly what it's going to be, but I don't think you're going to get away from it. NCLB is kind of here to stay. It was supposed to be re uh, reauthorized what five years ago, four years ago. Hi. <laughs> Um, you said um, that at high school level it was going to be copacetic. Uh, I'm not Probably, too happy about that. Probably, that's my guess. Um, but speaking about that level, um, we have had integrated programs. They aren't integrated like the new standards are, are talking about integrating. But we have had integrated programs for a long time now. Is there any data that you can point to that says kids learn better that way? I mean, as a, because what you're coming up against a, a lot of this is the colleges saying, did you take biology, did you take chemistry, did you take physics? And they want to see those discrete units, although they are accepting the integrated. But is there any data? So as a old SS and C folk, if you remember that, it was scope, sequence, and coordination, and it was an integrated program. And we were one of the 100 schools that first started that program. So I'm, I'm very aware of this. And so one of my board members just the other day said, well, what's the research that says that integrated works versus discipline? And unfortunately, what we have not done very well in science is done research on various instructional strategies. Um, in fact, even do we really know, of course, I question some of the research myself, that says we know exactly what students need in math to succeed in college that there's claims that, that we know this and that we know what it takes to be successful in college in ELA, English Language Arts, but we don't have the research of what it says to be successful in science. We don't have the research. In fact, I have uh, uh, several teams out right now looking for that research. Is there any research that talks about it? So if anyone knows of research that says integrated or disciplined works, um, that I need it because I have to have it by in two weeks. <laughs> so I, I'm desperately looking. Um, I, I do have a couple research firms out there. Achieve is out there looking for it. But in reality, there really is very thin research on some of that. So unfortunately, no. There was a doctoral dissertation that was done when the SS&C project was going very big. And what it did is it used the Golden State exam. I have some fans of Golden State exam. I was on the. Um, one of the teams to do that, um, that really looked at integrated, uh, integrated two students versus biology students, and they gave the Golden State exam to both groups of people, and what they found out was that the integrated people did as well or better than the kids that did straight biology. That's the only thing that I know of, but that was done, you know, like late 80s, and it was a doctoral dissertation, so we may have to pull that that went out again, but very little research. Hi, my name's Lori, and I'm from San Diego Unified School District, mm -hmm. and I'm not a teacher. I work um, to do outreach into the business community on behalf of career technical education. And so my question is, at the state level, is there much work happening to connect the science standards and our science-based career technical education? Yeah. and what those efforts look like. And also for your question about the, um, there is one study out there about um, people who've taken two or more career technical education classes. Right. Have, are you familiar with that study? Yeah. Being successful, okay. But, but that, that's, that may be what we have to use as well. Okay. Um, in terms of the CTE versus science, um, when we first, oh yeah. When we first started um, talking about NGSS, that was the first thing that my boss said. You know, we're, we're very big on CTE. And I go, I know we're very big on CTE. Um, and I said, but think about we've got engineering standards in the science. Now, remember the engineering standards are not trying to develop what is engineering. They're not trying to develop an engineering course, which is what a uh, very small state that starts with an M would like us to do. Um, also my home state, you know, Massachusetts. Um, we, we really were very clear that what NGSS wanted to do was have science understand the process and the problems in the natural world. 
but we understand that engineering comes in, that whole engineering design process comes in because you may not have the tool necessary to study a particular subject or a particular thing. And so engineering comes in with its technology and designs something to help us learn further, right? So it's a design issue. And so we're always constantly reminding folks we're trying to get to the design aspect of engineering, not engineering. Because my CTE folks, as they started looking at NGSS, they said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what are you doing here with this engineering? That's our, our realm. And I said, I realize that. So we have talked to, about how this fits together. We've talked about does this impact that and that impact that, and can they work together? And that's one of the things that about high school when you start talking about integration, I mean, um, my boss, Torlakson's gonna come out with a STEM task report, uh, report, and what it's gonna say is that we should start teaching STEM in kindergarten, and you should do it in an integrated fashion. You should have the application instead of doing the silos. So that's why I'm thinking high school is gonna stay kind of, you could do discipline, which there are aspects of disciplinary science that uh, many people in the conversation over the last three days said that's critical. It's good to have kind of a general understanding, but then let's go deep in one subject and help the student understand it completely. And I think there's some folks probably in the room that would agree with that. But, you know, if we're gonna do STEM and we're really gonna do it well, it has to be integrated. So we've, we've been doing that work. Also, uh, my environmental friends out in the world, we've been talking about the um, environmental concepts and principles, principles and concepts, the PNCs. Uh, we have done a lot of research to think about, if we look at NGSS and we look at the EEI standards, principles and concepts, do they fit together? And we have done preliminary cross-matching and we feel confident that anything that's in the uh, principles and concepts can be taught in the other um, world. We're, we're not trying to negate in any way. So just so it's out there. Um, yes. Bill, one of the things about reacting to the pace, uh, you know, you outlined 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, whatever it is. Um, people not in the education world see that as glacial or it takes a long time. So is there some answer in the way in which the next gen standards have been put together that addresses the introduction of new content or new ideas and that introduction is a key aspect of the design of these standards so that it's okay that the pace takes a long time but what's being standardized isn't limiting what you talk about. So can you give some talking points if you will? Yeah, I, I think, you know, when we start talking about the cross-cutting themes, I mean, the cross-cutting themes, they're not new, they're not revolutionary. We did them in the 1990 framework. And they were working reasonably well, but then, of course, our pendulum swung back to, we need a bunch of facts and figures. So I think we, if we can really understand the cross-cutting themes and can help students understand that, when you come across something that you don't know anything about, how do you start to study it? Well, you have to dig back in your head somewhere and find, so it, how can I start to even re review or, or research any of this? And that's where the cross-cutting themes are gonna come in. Because if you come across a system that you don't know anything about, well, it's a system, and you know how systems work. So is there something that's perturbing this system? Is there something, what are the um, aspects of the system? So that's really important that we, we continue to think about those cross-cutting themes, but then also the practices. Now the difference in California's standards today is that in the investigation and experimentation standards, many times it does have some aspects of the practices, but it also has like students will know how to graph. Well, that's, that's a, a discrete skill. It's not necessarily a practice. So it's getting to that habits of mind and so one of the things that we keep bringing up is that the NGSS will talk about giving students enough information for college will also help them in career. Um, what we know about careers, especially entry careers, is that you will never just walk out of high school and walk right into you know, a job that makes 60,000 a year, which is what some of my, friends, my uh, son's friends thought was gonna happen when they came to San Diego. They thought that they could do some couch surfing and get a degree in something and all of a sudden get out and get a $60,000 job. 
when my son's sitting there working in the lab and finally gets a biology degree in microchem, and then you know, he gets a $60,000 job right out of the, so we have to think about college, career, but we have to think of that, about that citizenry. You know, there's two things that we need to really think about in citizenry. There's the personal citizenry. You know, how do I know that the aspirin or the medicine or the process that the doctor is suggesting will really affect my system? And how do I know if it's affecting my system positively or, or negatively? In fact, when a doctor gives you a, a particular uh, prescription of medicine, they're hoping that your system is going to react favorably to this. But how many times have you had an allergic reaction to something? So personally, you have to think about that. But then think about all of the goofy bills that you've heard about. The one that I always uh, kind of come up against is um, at one point we wanted to save, um, I don't remember how many thousands of uh, acres of land up in Northern California. We want to save them. And everyone was, oh, yeah, we got to save them. And then the, the argument came out was, well, why save them? Because no one's going to go there. It's way off in the middle of Modoc County or something, and no one's ever going to be there. Why would we want to save this? Why not just log it and let's go? Well, if you don't understand the whole thing about biodiversity and maybe oxygen production and a few other things, you might just say, well, yeah, no one's going to be there. Let's, let, let's just cut the trees down. So I think what we have to continue to say to the public and um, this is part of the presentation that I usually do, is we're not just educating for to be a scientist. We're educating for that citizenry and for personal gain. And so we've got to continue with the habits of mind, which is what the um, practices are, and we have to try with those um, deep-rooted uh, disciplinary core ideas and then the, the um, cross-cutting themes. Does that kind of answer? Yeah. I mean, it's very important that citizenry, you know, this is, this is the one thing that when, when reading first became the big issue, I remember um, sitting in science worlds, and they said, we've got to show that science teaches reading. And I, I kind of bought it for a while, but then after I started thinking about it, science doesn't teach reading. It doesn't teach phonics or any of that other. But what it does do, it teaches the application of reading. And what we did is we bastardized science to say that science teaches reading, and that's why you should be teaching science. No, science teaches a thinking skill that you will use all your life. I mean, even the whole thing of, you know, should I buy a name brand can of tomatoes or should I buy Hunt's? You know, what's going to be the difference and is there a difference and how do I figure that out? You know, it, that's, the, that's the kind of habits of mind that science really teaches. So whether you're going to be a scientist or you're just going to be a general good guy, you still need to have that thinking skill, that, that habits of mind. Okay. So really, uh, um, in NGSS, if you haven't joined our listserv, I would really suggest you do because the listserv, and you can get it from your county or you can go on our website, the listserv will keep you up to date, but the things that will happen in the next couple weeks is the board meeting on the 10th, um, and, or the 9th, I forget, Wednesday, and it's item 10, and it'll give you some understanding. Um, it's always str uh, video streamed, so you can, you know, um, it's always archived as well, so you can kind of hear Stephen Pruitt, um, Dr. Stephen Pruitt from Achieve will be here on um, Wednesday. He will talk about the um, January release, He'll talk about how NGSS has changed, which you all pretty much have the information. And then I'm going to get up and talk about all the uh, public comments. I'll give general ideas and then kind of where we're headed with SCP, the Science Expert Panel, and what our next step is. Um, and then after that, then in May 13, 14, the SCP meets, um, and then they meet in June, and then the final recommendation will come out in July. That's kind of the process, and then everything else starts to happen. Now, I'm not anticipating that they will completely reject, but what they may do is say, you know what, we want this modification to happen or that. But it's really important we stay to the national process as best as we can, because it'll help us with resources as we go. Anything else? Yes, yes. If you, if you go to the um, Department of Ed website and just Google my name in there, put it up there, it'll get you to my office. 
always email me. I do answer them, but I do get like 300 a day. Yeah, that's why I'm always on my BlackBerry because I got to get rid of some of these because they're inane ones. But um, you know, I do I do answer, and if I don't know the answer, I will forward it to someone that uh, probably does. We have a team that's working on this. I just have to be the point person, but I have uh, several people within my office and in other divisions that are working on this. So. Hopefully everything's going to work out. We're going to improve science education, right? Yes. yes. We got to go to transformation. Thank you. Thank you.